All right, David will probably call in, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, thank you, everybody, for calling in, and I'll turn it over to Steve to walk us through the agenda. Okay, it's um, as typical during session, we're going to start with a uh, legislative update and an administrative up update will follow. The first thing I should say is session is, session will end on Sunday. Uh, at this point in time, they're not expected to complete their budget work by the end of uh, Sunday, so we can still uh, hold out hope, but the uh, expectation right now then is that there will be a special session. Hasn't been any indications yet on when that would start, whether it would uh, start immediately on Monday or if there would be a delay, that's up to the governor. But at this point in time, the reason I mention it is because some of the items on the uh, ledge update are dependent upon the budget or they're wrapped up in the budget. For instance, the tribal membership eligibility study um, is contingent upon funding in the budget. That's the first one I wanted to mention. That one that seems to be consensus on moving that forward. The plan is similar but slightly different to the merger study last year. It looks like the Select Committee on Pension Policy will be asked to study the issue of um, compact schools, uh, tribes moving into uh, the school system or being a part of the school system, tribal teachers, for instance, being David Klein. teachers. Hey, David, we just started going. I'm talking with about the first um, item on the ledge update, which is the tribal membership study. Great. Thank you. Um, so the select committee is expected to study the issue of tribal teachers in LEF and the, or tribal teachers in teacher in the TERS retirement system, and the board will be asked to study the issues surrounding uh, and take public testimony regarding the issues of allowing tribal law enforcement officers into the LEF retirement system. There's no expectation that a bill would come out of that or that there would be um, uh, recommendations uh, from the, or negotiations, I should say, by the board. This is more identifying um, what are some of the issues and so that when negotiations, if negotiations took place between the governor's office and any tribes who were interested in having their law enforcement officers join LEF, that they would have an awareness of what some of the key issues to negotiate would be. Uh, so for instance, uh, contributions, um, d reporting to DRS, training requirements. There's a number of different things that are kind of taken for granted and when you're talking about state agencies and local governments reporting to DRS or, or reporting members into the left system that are a little bit different when you're when you add a new employer and especially then when you add a new employer that's a sort of outside the state government um, framework in any event that's the the first issue the second one I wanted to talk about is the interrupted military service credit study the bill started out um, initially as a uh, benefit in change. It was going Quick question, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Sorry. Steve, would you like to just go all through them and take questions at the end, or did you want to take questions uh, item by item? Oh, go ahead and fire off your questions uh, item by item, Jason. Okay. Uh, uh, regarding the tribal membership eligibility study, um, <clears throat> will we as a board um, have the opportunity to weigh in on questions and concerns oh, uh, yeah. as far as that goes because uh, as you articulated there are several um, yes. I just didn't know when when that was going to be or, or what what uh, what the time would be to express those concerns no that would be part of the expectations is um, you board members represent um, 
cities and counties, you represent left members, uh, both police and fire, and all of you could end up having different issues. So for instance, um, the issues for law enforcement officers might, or including walk ops, the group that you represent, might be different from the employers. The employers might be more interested in, is there a possibility that this would affect the rates for instance, that would be charged to all employers, including local governments. On the law enforcement side, it's expected that there might be a number of questions from all the groups, including WACOPs, and y yes, you would ha not only have the opportunity, but you'd be expected to bring those forward, Jason. Sure, okay. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I had a few, but I didn't want to uh, clog up this morning's meeting if this wasn't the, the great venue for that. No, it'll probably be better to wait until we know for certain that we're doing the study and we know for certain what the uh, what's going to be asked of the board in the study. Very good, thank you. I should say, uh, typically, if session ends, we would have our first sort of full meeting, um, full agenda meeting, the, the interim planning meeting where we would do a session recap and a preview of what's already on the agenda for the upcoming interim at that first meeting of the year, and that would usually be in May. But uh, with the likelihood or the possibility, I should say, of a special session now, the May meeting may also be um, during special session, in which case the expectation is it would be similar to this type of meeting. We keep you up to date on what's going on legislatively and administratively, but um, wouldn't have a full uh, planning meeting for the upcoming interim because we wouldn't know at that time what's on your plate. So we'll keep you updated as far as special session goes um, and the May board meeting. Now, the, um, the second item then on the ledge update is the interrupted military service credit study. That started out as a bill um, that would have provided no cost interrupted military service to left two members. And right now there's a requirement in statute that you serve during a period of war and that you receive a combat uh, ribbon or campaign medal for that service. And those that distinguishes between service during a time of war that's um, domestic or combat, if you, for lack of a, combat and non-combat is probably a better way to describe it. Combat service, you get your service credit for that uh, time period for free. Non-combat, you can still get service credit if you're called up to serve, but you pay the same contributions that you would normally have paid if you had been and left doing your uh, regular job. This bill would have eliminated that campaign and combat requirement, which would have meant any left two member who served during the time of war would get no cost uh, interrupted military service credit. That raised some concerns about how many members would this affect, what's the cost of that benefit. Um, as you all are well aware, no cost doesn't mean that it doesn't cost anything, it just means that it doesn't cost that individual member. All the other members and the employers and the state would actually pay the cost of adding that service credit to the uh, plan. So there, w there isn't, at this point in time, sufficient data for the actuary's office to estimate the rate impact of that. And uh, the fiscal note that came out on the original bill was indeterminate, so the bill was uh, converted in the House. It was amended to turn into a study for the left two board to work with the actuary's office and the Department of Retirement Systems, try to get a feel for how many of these uh, members may be out there, what would be the cost of eliminating that combat requirement. Also, the original board that uh, the original legislation that distinguished between combat and non-combat service was a board bill. So this bill also would have, uh, would have been a policy change 
And so part of the study would be, has the board's policy position on this issue changed? Or, is, or does the board still feel that a uh, distinction between combat and non-combat service is appropriate? That will be the interrupted military service credit study. That one, unlike the tribal membership study, is something that you know the board can do as part of its regular planning. So that study doesn't come with any additional funds. It's not expected to require the use of outside attorneys like the tribal membership study will. The initial uh, parts of the tribal membership study did include um, resources for the board, an extra uh, allocation authority of up to $50,000 to get extra AG time or extra potential outside counsel uh, study for some of the federal and state legal issues that are likely to come up. The other bill that I want to talk about um, or issue that I want to talk about is public hospital district EMTs. Um, as an example of how things change daily during session, when we sent out the materials to you, the bill number for that was uh, 5659. However, since that time, uh, since the bill came out of the Senate and went over to the House, it's changed a number of times. And two new bills have actually been introduced. The one that is alive is Substitute House Bill 2202. The House doesn't, it's a technical thing, but the House doesn't have the authority to change the title of a bill. And in the House, the legislature, the um, House Appropriations Committee identified some changes that they wanted to make to the bill to broaden the impact of it a little bit. Instead of just applying to public hospital districts and uh, some municipal corporations out there that exist to provide emergency medical services, they wanted to apply it to all employers. There's a concern in the House that there may be some other employers out there that might have EMTs that would be eligible for LEF, and rather than excluding them and then setting up the potential for another lawsuit similar to the one that led to the creation of this bill, the House wanted to broaden it, make sure it covers everybody in one uh, fell swoop and sort of hopefully then puts this issue to rest. That'll create some administrative challenges for DRS, and at this point in time, nobody, we, we kind of had an idea of how many members would uh, be affected by the bill at public hospital districts, but we don't know now if any at all would be picked up by this expansion, um, and if so, how many. But that'll be something that we'll uh, stay on top of with the uh, department as they go through the administration of this bill. That bill did pass out of the House yesterday uh, unanimously. It still needs to pass out of the Senate before the um, end of session on Sunday, though. If it doesn't, then it's expected that that issue will be alive for a special session. But um, we'll keep the website posted and keep you updated in terms of whether or not that bill does uh, get it passed by the Senate before the end of session. Another issue that affects left members that's been, oh, I should ask if there's any questions about that one before I move on. If not, another bill that um, affects left members is uh, uh, PTSD, making that a uh, presumptive duty related uh, condition both for L and I and then that would spill over to left two as well. That bill has not um, passed out of the House. I think there's an expectation or at least there's discussions that it will get at some point in time converted into a study of both by the study would probably be primarily at L and I. L and I has a hard time right now coming up with uh, assumptions on the number of members who are expected to get PTSD. 
this is an area where the medical uh, treatment or the medical diagnoses around PTSD are changing. Uh, one of the things specifically is that the medical community now recognizes that PTSD can occur from a repeated exposure to a traumatizing event as opposed to just like a single event, um, which is probably the way we most commonly think of it, where you have an event like, say, 911, and that single event is what triggers PTSD. But especially in the military, they've uh, learned that it's also very common that it may not have been a particular roadside bomb that caused PTSD, but after seven or eight of them, you had it, and it was that repeated exposure. As the medical community has sort of broadened its understanding, that's having a ripple effect now, not only in the state of Washington, but around the country in terms of the number of cases being diagnosed by PTSD, particularly among uh, police and fire employees. The, uh, as you uh, are well aware, police and fire also um, often face repeated exposures to similar types of events. And so um, the, um, the current statutory language with respect to LNI is focused on a specific event. So it's usually it's like a one-time thing, whereas a condition that uh, occurs due to repeated exposures doesn't really fit in the LNI uh, um, framework. That is where that was the genesis of this bill, but it looks at this point in time like it may turn into a study. The board's role in that would simply be providing helping LNI with any data that we have regarding the numbers of members uh, who are um, have been diagnosed with PTSD. Most of that data, I think, they get from DRS anyway. But um, uh, so the impact of this study on the board is expected to be fairly minimal. Now, I do not expect at this point in time, as I mentioned, uh, well, or at least it seems uh, like a, a strong possibility that neither the supplemental operating budget or the next biennial operating budget will um, pass. Um, let's see. The PTSD bill is uh, is stalled in the Senate right now, Jeff. Okay, Th as a study or no, just the bill. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Jeff Simpson's here from the firefighters. He was pointing out that the PTSD bill did come out of the House and is currently in the Senate. The money for the bill is in the House budget. Now, the two budgets, uh, as I was uh, starting to say, at this point in time, it uh, doesn't look like they're going to get those done before Sunday. And so then that would flow over into special session. And then I don't want to uh, go too much further into that piece of of it, but I, unless there are questions. All right. The, um, with respect to the administrative update, there are two main, uh, well, one uh, major project that's going on right now is the cooperative project that I've spoken with you about for the last several months with the Department of Retirement Systems regarding uh, uh, duty disability rulemaking, and that project's been going really well. There have been weekly meetings at the department, uh, which I've been invited to sit in on, and then uh, periodic meetings also with the AGs as a specific legal issue has been identified during the course of those weekly rule meeting, uh, rulemaking meetings. That um, the goal was to have some duty disability rules completed before summer, and I think the department's well on um, track to meeting that goal and uh, 
they have, uh, again, it's been a very cooperative process. The board, we've had plenty of opportunities to provide input and it's been um, listened to. Outreach activities, we've got several um, coming up. Um, just recently, um, Tammy was at Washington Concerns of Police uh, Survivors and Tim did a presentation to Kent firefighters that was uh, well received. Next week, the State Council of Firefighters is having their education seminar in Spokane. The board will have a table set up there with uh, informational materials. Uh, I'll be there and Ryan will be there to answer questions that members have about their pensions or about the left board. And then uh, I will be uh, this year sitting in on, I'll be uh, joining Craig Susi on a presentation about retirement preparedness and then I'll be doing a separate presentation on the annuity and um, purchase of service credit, which I'm gonna start that presentation off by playing the video that Paul created that's out on the board website that deals with purchase of service credit and the annuity and hopefully they'll, uh, as soon as they watch the video, that'll answer all their questions. That might be one of the quickest presentations ever. But we'll see about that. That's uh, next week in, uh, in Spokane. At this point in time, that concludes my um, presentation on both the legislative update and the administrative update, Mr. Chair, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have or any questions that any of the board members have. Okay, my question for you, Steve, is do you think you'll have any problem filling that gap if there are no questions? No. Okay, that's what I thought. Let's see, the, um, I think that'll be it. We will, again, we'll get a uh, update out to you as far as where everything stands next Monday after the end of session. I'll be on the road to Spokane, so that'll probably be coming out to all the board members from Tim, but that'll give you an idea of sort of what the status is of all of these issues at the end of session. And then uh, possibly by Monday as well, we'll have some um, word from the governor about uh, if, it if there is a need for a special session, what the plans are for special session. I'm sure you'll see that in the newspaper as well, but um, we'll be able to share that with you and then kind of keep you up to date again as far as how special session progresses and what effect, if any, that's going to have on the May left to board meeting. If you guys have any questions after the meeting's over or questions come up during the week as you uh, talk with your respective organizations or hear things, the last week of session can get pretty crazy, so things change on a daily basis. If you have any questions or something comes up, um, please, uh, you all have my cell number. You can call me anytime. Um, Ryan's going to be driving over to Spokane, so I'll be able to talk while I'm on the road. Um, and that's a, that's a, normally for me, be a six hour drive. For Ryan, it's probably more like a four and a half hour drive. But still, I could talk pensions for four and a half hours um, if you guys have any questions. Well, during the session, Steve, we don't have that much time at the educational seminar, but. I uh, just want to let everybody know we, we did send an email out regarding uh, executive director compensation and we're waiting for the first, uh, the next in-person uh, full meeting on that is why it's not on today's agenda. All right, if there are no other questions or comments, uh, we will adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Jay. Second. 
Okay, moved and seconded. Any objections? Okay, everybody, thank you for taking the time to call in. Appreciate it. And we Thanks, are guys. adjourned. Yeah.